subscribe, hit it, ding the bell, stay up to date. You know the drill. You know the drill. DC News Board, lot to discuss today. Penguin, Spider-Man, Star Wars. I guess that's it. Maybe more. It's the News Board. I'm James. Welcome, everyone. We are here. We're going to have a good time talking the news today. Like I said, we are going to, we have a few topics to discuss. All fun stuff, pop culture news, and blah, 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 blah. As, I, oh my God. As we shake, shake, shake. Uh, yeah, look, uh, Spider-Man's getting a, a new director. A Spider-Man 4, new director, Tom Holland, Zendaya, uh, apparently are going to be returning uh, with a director from Shang-Chi. Very exciting news. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. First up, though, let's get to the Penguin. Huge Penguin is my favorite Batman fan. It's kind of mixed on the Penguin's portrayal in Caped Crusader, the animated series where they gender swap the Penguin. Yeah! I thought what they did with the character was okay. No need for the... They could have made the character a brand new character. I, you know, same with Harley Quinn, probably. They could have. I liked Harley Quinn, though. But I feel like some of these characters, they could have just made original characters, but instead decided, we'll gender swap. Why not? So they did that, and we got what we got. And I didn't hate it. Didn't hate it. Don't think I loved it. Didn't hate it. Kind of indifferent. But Penguin is my favorite character. I thought Colin Farrell was fantastic. Uh, he was no Danny DeVito, but very different version of the Penguin. I'm not comparing them. I'm not saying I like one over the other. But he was not Danny DeVito, obviously. He's not Danny DeVito, so why would he be? Uh, but I liked his portrayal. I was very excited when they announced that he was getting a show. And I was even more excited when I heard that, heard that the show was actually happening. Wow. In this day and age, something that they said was going to be produced is being produced. Not only has it been produced, it's coming to us. Coming to us sooner than uh, later, it's uh, just a couple weeks away. One week away, two weeks away, three weeks away. That new trailer dropped last week. Looks phenomenal. I think the show looks great. But in uh, Games Radar, this article is coming to us from Games Radar. He spoke to Total Film saying that he's kind of done with playing. Uh, the character doesn't want to wear the makeup anymore. He said as the series went along, he got you know it got more and more tiring, more and more exhausting. A lot more went into it. I, I think not just the costume itself, but the physic, the mentality that goes along with playing a character like that probably the voice, the attitude, whatnot, it probably does get exhausting on you uh, in a lot of ways. You know, if you heard Jack Nicholson talk about playing the Joker, the Joker was exhausting. He mentioned it to Heath Ledger, apparently. It's very, or he said, he suggested to Heath Ledger. It was very exhausting playing characters like that, where you have to go into this mental state, like a very different state of mind from what you are and portray a character. Even though it is just acting, you still have to kind of like believe in what you're doing. Uh, and he says at the end that he hopes that he never has to wear that effing, I'm going to say effing, mask again colin farrell done with the penguin uh but then earlier according to variety matt reeves is saying that colin farrell is all in on the penguin too he's even read the script how or the batman too how has he read the script for the batman too yeah we can't get a script for this ray movie un freaking believable but here we are just a few weeks away from the penguin and colin farrell doesn't want to portray this character anymore so it looks like season two is very Slim chances, slim to none. However, you know, it it is a lot more playing this character, getting in costume with this character every single day. Look at this. Let's turn our light. Ah! Every single day, as opposed to a few days, a few scenes, things like that. This was he was the main character of the show. And so all day, nonstop, for however many weeks they 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 filmed this, he was in hair, makeup wardrobe all of that and then getting in that mental state so it'll be different doing it for a movie where he pro he won't be the the antagonist the main antagonist he'll be a part of it on a bigger ensemble obviously covered by robert pattinson who will not be in the penguin matt reeves said that robert pattinson's batman will not be in the penguin he said nope no batman in the penguin the series is grounded and it is about the batman also he said that the batman 2 the batman universe the matt reeves batman universe is going to stay very 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 grounded no clay, like, well, I guess you could get a clay face, but that's why they use those characters in the Cape Crusader because they couldn't use them in the Reeves verse story. Which, look, I actually I love the Batman, I'm a big fan of the Batman, I'm a big fan of all the Batman movies, but I love the Batman. But I, I still I say this all the time like, at some point, they've got to make Batman accessible for a younger generation, like a little bit more. Like, I mean, adults can still you know, be the driving force for Batman. But at some point, they got to make a Batman that kids want to watch. 
right? That that they can make an animated show that kids will want to watch. I, maybe not. I mean, the Batman the animated series, I guess, was kind of a little bit darker, but it was still for kids, and that was a different. That was thirty years ago. Entertainment was vastly different back then. But I just feel like there's no Batman that kids can really get behind. Like the Dark Knight trilogy, as great as it is, you know, you talk to kids, kids find those movies boring. They do. They find those movies boring. So it's it's really tough for kids to get into to Batman nowadays. Iron Man is Batman. Iron Man has as sur- has surpassed Batman in terms of popularity. I would argue maybe, maybe I mean Batman is still Batman, but he's just not for kids. And at some point you want to have like a fun Batman where he can face, you know, weird creatures, which is something that I was kind of hoping we would get to see Ben Affleck's do. He's we can go a little bit darker. But for some reason, whenever somebody gets a Batman story, because of who Batman is, because he's He's not a superhero necessarily. He doesn't have the superpowers or anything. They kind of want to bring him down into and ground him in a reality more than any other superhero around. They just there's just for whatever reason that's the thing. And it could be because you know the Schumacher movies went a little bit too far in, in the fantastical range with, with some Schwarzenegger Poison Ivy action. But I don't know. I'm not sure. But there's for whatever reason they like we got to ground this. I know they, like Iron Man one they grounded right. They said the Mandarin couldn't be the villain in Iron Man one because they needed to have a villain who was more grounded in reality. And then because of the MCU and the way that unfolded, they were able to bring in like the Mandarin eventually. But they were able to to have like Thor and 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 Asgard and Loki and characters like that over time right it wasn't like right away we had iron man and iron man 2 i think i mean the hulk i guess the hulk is kind of there but you know you can't, can only do what you can do so th- there's this mo and grounding mcu kind of like washed that away but now with the state of the mcu they might go back to that <laughs> we might go right back it's always like dc was always ahead of time always ahead of the time right they're like we got to be grounded and then they're, first they were too fantas- fantastical then they were too grounded and they're always a, and then they had the they had the the multiverse and they're always like a step behind. Speaking of multiverse, according to Cosmic Wonder over on online, whoa, over online, uh, the multiverse uh, will probably make an appearance in Spider-Man Four. Uh, look out! Apparently, it's going to be a grounded movie. So this this movie is going to be grounded, but it's still going to have aspects of the multiverse. I don't know how that works. I think it, I think it could work. I think I think. I think when they, I'm not really sure what they mean by grounded, but I think it's going to be a smaller scope of story. And I think that's really what, you know, like No Way Home, as grand as, as, grand as that was, it is kind of a small story. It's kind of a personal story. And I, I think Spider Man really lends himself to that. And I think just him and his friends, him and his friends kind of coping with each other and, 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 and him coping with being Spider Man is a huge aspect of it. But one thing that was mentioned on, on this article, that kind of struck me in a way that I wasn't so thrilled to read was that this Doctor Strange spell will kind of be undone, just like wiped out. Like, you know that spell? Forget about it. And this is, you know, it's one of those things where going into talking about Star Wars, where you have the baby Yoda, Grogu going with Luke, and then they undo that like right away with Book of Boba Fett. And that's kind of feels like kind of like what we're getting now with the spells. We had the spell for like a movie, and then the next movie they're going to undo the spell. And you know, it, I, I'm sure it won't be right away. It'll be gradual, but still, you know, like over time, it would have been it would have been kind of cool to see Peter on his own and maybe trying to refriend his friends or or stay away from, or maybe his friends are drawn to him for whatever reason, like because not, like that fate would bring them together. They would still be friends, but. He's like, no, we can't be. So that could be an aspect, but I, but apparently it's gonna all unfold. But I am excited for Spider Man Four. There has, like, just like Batman, there has a bit of Spider Man movie I haven't liked. I think the Spider Man movies as a whole have been stronger than the Batman movies as a whole. Like, if you put them all together, but I, I am looking forward to Spider Man Four. I think, I, you know, it's a new director, new vision. It should be fun. Shang Chi had a lot of fun. Um, action scene so i'm excited to see what they bring there and spider-man who doesn't love spider-man right everybody loves spider-man i grew up with spider-man you grew up with spider-man we all grew up with spider-man so it'll be exciting to see spider-man come back into the forefront come back uh, you know before an avengers movie hopefully um and then be in the avengers movies it's just nice to have them around it's nice to have spider-man around and it's nice to know that there is traction on this and it is happening and it looks like sony and marvel kind of made a compromise on the multiverse on the grounded the grounded story. I, for one, like the grounded stuff. I'm kind of over multiversal stories. 
um as they they were felt like no way home was a lot of fun and it was cool to see them all and like deadpool and wolverine was obviously fun but you can get to a point where you use it as a crutch and i'm not i don't that's that's when i get nervous and i don't enjoy it is when they start using it as a crutch because that's too easy way too easy to get away with that you're like oh we have to get out of this situation it's like it's one of the reasons why and everybody loves this movie but it's harry potter i think it's the prisoner of azkaban Everybody is a massive fan of this movie, and it's one of my least favorites. And the reason why it's one of my least favorites is just because at the end, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, I can time travel. Let's just time travel and say everything right. And then there's like seven movies after that or whatever. And you just say, well, why don't you just time travel all the time? I've heard it's explained a lot better in the books, but in the movie for me, it felt like a cop out. And that's how I've, I mean, the Star Trek movies sometimes have done that cop out. Sometimes time travel works back to the future. And sometimes I find it as a cop out. But when it's, when it's available to you, and when the multiverse is available to you, you can use that as a cop out any way you want. And and that's what I don't really like about it. So I hope they kind of they utilize it in whatever way they need to. And then they they put a little button on it and they sew it back up and they send it back out into the into the void space void where it, it belongs. And I guess Loki would shut the door. If somebody shuts the door on that would be fantastic. In that same post, uh, they talk about I'll just briefly say Loki uh, possibly returning. In an Avengers movie, but it won't be Tom Hiddleston Loki. So that that was brought up. So that's that's intriguing. But that's all from Cosmic Wonder. And the final story today, I got to bring this up. Executive producer Heidi Fetter bringing this to my attention. The big the big Star Wars feud that's been going on. This massive Star Wars feud uh, in the fandom. You have side A versus side B, and everyone is accusing everyone of everything under the sun. I'm sure you know it. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but there's a lot of accusations in terms of, of name calling and racism and like really bad things. And uh, I, I don't watch, I don't watch full disclosure. I don't watch any of the channels mentioned. I, I have seen videos from the channels mentioned, but I don't watch them regularly. And I haven't seen them in quite some time uh, aside from when this all started going down. But, but, but it, it is funny how, you know, and I've, I said this on, on Monday's live stream on Rebel Scum Podcast, that you have a YouTuber or a YouTube group or whatever that you hate. And instead of ignoring them, instead of don't recommend this channeling them or even muting them, blocking them, whatever. I prefer muting to blocking. But I, I try not to block a lot of people. I block some. But instead of doing all that, you call them out. On social media using their tag their YouTube link their podcast link drawing attention directly to them basically telling you know your followers your friends saying I can't stand this person and then you but then you're peaking the interest of all of those people right you're peaking all of a sudden it's like I, I, I had no interest I never even heard of this channel but now you've told me about it and I've got to see what they said and you go there and that that is it's a fascinating thing. And then I've also heard, I guess I'm doing it now, but I've heard from our executive producer I Fetter that there are YouTube channels out there that all they do is complain about other YouTube <laughs> YouTubers out there. And they're probably and they're successful, probably way more successful than I am. Obviously, no everybody is. But that blows my mind that that's a thing. But there's this huge war in fandoms. Fan, it's not really. It's not. It's not. It's not though. It's not Forbes did an article on it. But really, if you the minute you turn off your computer. That doesn't exist anymore. There's no war. No one cares outside. I doubt anybody, anybody with a life actually cares. I'm talking about it because it because this is YouTube. This is the world that we're in. And you know, you want to hear about it. And and executive producer Heidi was like, <laughs> kind of had a a fun, a fun little thought on it. Let's read it right here. This is over on the Rebel Scum podcast channel where we do Monday night live streams called Flying Casual. Uh, and this was Heidi was on the show, but she commented on it after saying, I don't mean to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but it seems to me that channels might be benefiting by all the traffic they're bringing in because of the civil war or feud. If you prefer, I would call it a feud more than a civil war. I would just call it, you know, parts of fandom beefing with each other over comments that were made that they didn't so much appreciate. Um, whether or not the accusations are true or false, I don't know. Like I said, I don't watch the channels. I don't listen to them. I don't know what they say on a daily, weekly, hourly basis. 
Uh, but you know what? You're not wrong. Heidi is not, executive producer. Heidi is not wrong at all. All the channels I believe are benefiting greatly. I know we did over at Rebel Scum. We benefited from that one as well. We had a, a large uh, number of viewers for us for our live stream. It was it was a it was a lively chat, and uh, and the numbers on that video are doing are doing pretty well for that little channel also. So it is something that you know when you start the snowball. It starts a rolling, and 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 part of it is why does negativity feed? Why does neg why does YouTube feed off of negativity? And I don't think it's YouTube that feeds off negativity. I think it's it's human nature feeds off negativity. And something that Heidi said on the live stream verbally was, you know, you don't complain about the McDonald's burger. You don't praise the McDonald's burger to the manager. You complain about the McDonald's burger to the manager. And that's basically what it is. And and it just seems like everybody is gravitating to these negative videos. And, and the way the algorithm works is once you click on one negative video, it's going to recommend another negative video and another negative video. And it's going to say, hey, you want to watch these videos? And YouTube, the algorithm of YouTube doesn't know if it's negative or positive. It just knows the keywords and the titles and all that stuff that you and the, and the site that you're on or the channel you're on. It knows what you're on and it's recommending based on that and that's what's happening and so if you really don't like something don't watch it would be the key but hit don't recommend channel and it's out of sight out of mind and i and i i i, I can't stress that enough and i said this on monday's show on rebel scum i said you know i've i've hit that channel a bazillion times for more than just star wars stuff for everything it's like you know what i don't like the way these you know this whatever handles this i don't like the way this does this so i hit the recommend channel and and i think that's the best state of affairs for everybody in star wars fandom at the the moment right now i think star wars has a lot of other issues i don't think youtubers fighting youtubers is is a big deal and like if you go to the movie tomorrow i i mean maybe if you live somewhere where people are obsessed with youtube but i think most places people wouldn't even know or care that it happened forbes look forbes did the article and I think that's why we ended up doing the video on Monday was because of the Forbes article. But at the end of the day, Forbes, over the last half decade to even a decade, Forbes has been a very much into these clickbait articles and they want you to click on it. And that's why they did that. And they were smart to do it because they know that the people, they know that I, I think the reality is there's not enough people, you know, a significant group of people don't care about that, but there's a big group a big group that are obviously online that do care, which is why, you know, videos on, on Rebel Scum channel do well, why videos on these channels that are part of it are doing well too, because they want to hear what do you have to say about this feud? And so I don't think it's a con conspiracy theory. I don't think, you know, side A did it to, to get side, to get views for themselves. And I don't think, I really don't think they did it to get views for side B, but I think that it is being utilized by everyone who can to generate views, to generate subscribers, to generate you know more videos and more content for them, and it's smart too. It's smart to do that. How could it not be? And, and that's that's where I said I'm kind of I'm indifferent to the whole thing. I don't you know I'm not I don't really care. I don't really care. I don't have a horse in the race. I've interacted with a couple people from there in the past, like I said, and you know it is what it is. And 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 some people are nicer than you think, and some people are not. And that's just the reality of it. But I think, you know, the idea that no view is a bad view, right? No a thumb up or thumb down is bad. They're all good for your channel. So the more eyes, ears, thumbs, click that bell, subscribe, all that stuff matters on YouTube. And, and that's what it's all about. And so, yeah, when things like this happen, YouTubers are going to are going to like flock to it, you know, like a seagull to like the to, to junk on the beach, right? They're good. That's what they're going. They're going to. We're all going to go for it because to keep to keep the viewership up, you got to be part of all that. So you got to you got to at least comment on it and make some kind of reference to everything that's going on. Um, I mean, the bigger channels obviously don't, but the smaller ones this is what you do. You you feast on you feast on on these little on the leftovers here. And you do these videos. And I'm sure we won't be done talking about it. I have more to say. I have more to say about Star Wars. You'll see it right here on the DC News, uh, which is a new thing we're doing here. And and I don't know. I just think, I don't, like I said, I don't watch them, so I don't know. But I would say you, you can really tell YouTubers a lot of times, like the ones that I watch, you can really tell who's genuine 
And I, I know some who I liked and then they were disingenuous, right? They kind of turned into like the mob. They were like, okay, well, I need to gravitate to to this. And they start gravitating and, and then they kind of come back and they're more gen, gen, um, genuine now, right? You gravitate to the views, to the subscribers, you grab everyone, you reel them in, and then when they get to know you, you can revert back to who you are. And I think that's a, I don't know if that's good or bad, I, I, but it works. I mean, it's all, I mean, if you are in the YouTube game for real, and this is your living and your outcome, that's a game you have to play. No question about it. You have to play that game. And, and people do it well, and people don't do it well. And we do it mostly for fun here. Um, Andrew Fantasia does it to talk about Marvel United, and he knows a lot of you very, very much love Marvel United. All right, we're going to wrap things up here at DC News. We hope you liked it. We hope you had fun. Uh, I guess we're going to say goodbye.